My name is Chris Turner, and I'm the CEO and Director of Training for Radical Transformation. Today, I'd like to talk to you from a lean manufacturing coach perspective about lean principles and how they can transform your business into a lean enterprise. So why would you bother becoming a lean enterprise? Why would you take the time and effort to do that? Well, there's certain things we do know for sure. And one of those things is that lean principles has been applied for over 50 years with proven results worldwide. Many organizations have successfully integrated both a lean philosophy and lean principles into their business model. One of the key things that separates these companies from all the others is that they empower their workers to make critical decisions about their own workplace. One of the first things that you need to understand is customer expectations. What do customers really expect from you? Well, the first thing they expect is value for money. And value for money can be broken down into really four critical customer requirements. The first one is cost. What they expect is competitive pricing. Second one is service. They really need attention to their needs. And quality, zero defects. They don't want any failures. Delivery, they expect you to deliver their items to meet their schedule on their time frame. But that leads us to another key question. Is your company satisfying your customers' expectations by delivering value for money? It's an important question to keep asking. So the key question is, what is value? What is it? Well, it's an activity that the customer would be willing to pay for. It must be done right first time, and it changes the fit form or function of a product or service. So what is non-value? Well, it's an activity the customer is not willing to pay for. It doesn't change the fit form or function of a product. It actually absorbs resources and increases the cost of the product. So the key thing here is that if you're not adding value, you're adding cost. One of the key things we need to look at in any organization is the ratio of value versus non-value. If we take a typical traditional non-lean company, what we find is that 95% of lead time is actually non-value added. There's only three things that can happen to a product while it's in any business. That's either it's being worked on, which is generally value added, or it's been moved, or it's sitting waiting, which are non-value added. When we look at non-value, we can actually break it down into eight different wastes. Overproducing, waiting, transportation, excessive processing, excessive inventory, defective work, excessive motion, and underutilized people. We'll go through an explanation of each of these on the next slide. So the explanations of the eight wastes are overproducing. That's actually producing more than the next process can deal with. Waiting. This is waiting for people, equipment, or materials, etc. Transportation. That's moving people, equipment, or materials from A to B. Excessive processing. This is adding steps into the process. Usually it happens over time. You start off with process A, and then before you know where you are, you've got B, C, D, and E, and all these different functions being added into it to work around some of the issues that the people are experiencing. Excessive inventory, materials, documents, or supplies that are using up retail space. Defective work, this is where you rework or reinspect a defective product that adds cost to the product, and the only person that pays for that is the customer. Excessive motion. This is where we have multiple handling within the work area, multiple handling of parts, materials, paperwork, etc. And then finally, underutilized people. This is where individuals are not utilizing their full potential or creativity within the work area because usually they're not allowed to. So one of the key things about a lean enterprise is that they will encourage people to really utilize their full creativity and potential. One of the key differences with a traditional company is the way they improve output to make more, to get more, to sell more, whatever it is they're trying to achieve. If we take the ratio of 5% value and 95% waste, 
what a traditional organization will do to increase output is they'll add more resources, they'll build bigger facilities, they'll add more equipment, more people, etc. The problem is, even though they grow the business and they get more output, the ratio of waste to value still stays the same. They don't really focus on the waste aspect, they only focus on the value part of their business. So nothing changes apart from they spend more money. An organization that implements lean looks at it from a different perspective. They start off with the same ratio, 95 to 5%. But what they do is they start to work on the waste. Well, first of all, they've got to identify it, and then they eliminate it. And then what that does is they increase output by using the same resources, but they use their waste to increase value. And they do this from a customer perspective. They focus on the customer and always give value to the customer and always work towards giving value for the customer. One of the key things that we developed at Radical Transformation is a 10-step model to become a lean enterprise. And really, these are the key 10 steps in order to move any organization from where they are today. Step one is strategy deployment. This is really defining your journey. How do you get from where you are today to your vision, to where you need to be? Step two, that's value stream mapping. This is where we would identify the opportunities for improvement within each certain functions of a business and know exactly that we're using our resources in the most effective manner. Step three is workplace organization. This is actually a combination of 5S and visual management. By using the 5S and visual management systems, we can actually organize the workplace in a more efficient, effective manner. Step four is improve process flow, identifying bottlenecks, reducing constraints, etc. Step five, reduce change over times. Long change over times cause organizations to produce things in bigger batches. We want to reduce batch sizes in order to reduce lead times. So that's what you need to reduce change over times for. Step six, implement a pull system. This is starting to take control of the production process. You need to have predefined limits and set limits on the amount of product that can move through a process at any one time instead of just building things for the sake of building things. It should really be based on customer demand. Step seven is balancing the workload. This is where we start to equal out the workload so certain parts of the organization are not overwhelmed or underwhelmed in terms of workload. Step eight, develop standard work. This is documenting the best practices and then spreading them throughout the facility or organization. Step nine, continuous improvement. This is where we start to enter into levels of problem solving. How do we maintain our movement forward in order to reduce waste? Step 10, this is lean supply chain, moving your lean efforts out into the supply chain, tying it into your customers and to your suppliers so that you're making it a win-win for everybody. The key benefits of uh, becoming a lean enterprise is that if you actually improve quality through stabilizing a process, getting a more consistent process, you reduce costs. You also reduce waste, which increases capacity. If you increase capacity and reduce waste, you will increase speed, which will reduce overall lead time and improve on-time delivery. That increases flexibility to respond to customer needs faster, and that improves customer satisfaction. More customer satisfaction, the higher that is, the more profit that a business will make. Why is that? Because what is profit? Profit is the reward a business gets for increasing customer satisfaction. So I'd like to thank you for viewing this presentation. I hope it stimulated your thought processes. Remember, Lean is a different way of doing things. It also requires a different way of thinking. As Albert Einstein says, you can't solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created the problem in the first place. You have to change your thinking. Thank you.